What's going on, YouTube? I'm Slick, that's Slick Jackson, and if you're looking for the coolest, grooviest content on the site, you've come to the right place. So, Pride Month has been producing a lot of interesting story, and this is one such story that stood out to me. I've actually had it lying around for a couple of weeks. Amazon is a company that's been criticized for a lot of things, and to be honest, I've kind of been skeptical of the claims here and there. Like I saw a TikTok where someone's talking about how bad it is to work at Amazon. He says one of the reasons it's a bad place to work is is because he decided to take a knee, you know, rest himself for like five minutes, and apparently he was told to go back to work or something, and I'm like, well, that just kind of sounds like a normal warehouse job. You've got the time where you work, and time where you rest. If you can't handle that, go get a job where you can sit on your hua all day. But then you got the stories where someone literally dies, and it takes like an hour or something for someone to actually do anything about it. Now, that's a little more egregious. You know, just a tiny bit worse, obviously. And you know, there's the deal with the unions and employment treatment and that kind of stuff, you know. I'll admit, that sort of stuff makes me hesitant to give Amazon my business. But it's like I said, Amazon is a pretty sketchy company, and well, it's Pride Month, so combine those two and you've got yourself a pretty damn interesting story. We have an article from Business Insider, Amazon employees storm a company Pride Month celebration protest in the sale of transphobic content. Amazon employees staged a die-in. That's a new one. I've heard of sit-ins before, die-ins I'm not familiar with. What, do they just swallow a bunch of cyanide pills and their bodies litter the streets? Or do they just lie on the ground and be general nuisances? At the company's Seattle headquarters, disrupting a company LGBTQ Pride Month celebration in protest of Amazon's continued sale of transphobic books. In an email, an Amazon spokesperson reiterated previous company statements in support of trans rights and Amazon's LGBTQ employees. The company chooses to sell books from a very broad range of viewpoints, including books that conflict with our company values and corporate positions, the spokesperson wrote. The nearly 30 protesters who stormed a company-sponsored broad flag raising ceremony on Amazon Seattle campus Wednesday included members of the internal LGBTQ activist group No Hate at Amazon. In speeches, protesters accused the company of attempting to rainbow wash its image while making money off of the sale of content that harms transgender people. Wow, it's almost like there's an ulterior motive to these corporations saying that they support gay rights this and trans rights that. One may assume that it's only being done to get good PR or something. Now that being said, I do think it's possible to sell books that criticize the transgender movement while also supporting the transgender movement. I don't really think it has anything to do with identity politics. It more so has to do with everyone deserves to have a voice, right? If you let one side use your platform to spread your message, I'd say you should let the other side do so as well. That being said, again, we're talking about a corporation here. More likely they're using the whole prod thing for good press. Other LGBTQ groups have leveled similar complaints against Amazon, including Seattle Pride, which this year barred Amazon from sponsoring its annual Pride Parade over the company's financial donations to politicians who actively propose and support anti-LGBTQIA plus legislation, oppose pro-LGBTQIA plus and other human rights legislation and for allowing anti-LGBTQIA plus organizations to raise funds from their Amazon Smile program, the group said in a statement in March. Although to be fair, I don't think Amazon is supporting these politicians because of their stances on social issues. They probably donate to them because they'll pass laws that'll let them continue with their sketchy business practices, but I won't get into that. I'm not big on politics. Nearly 600 Amazon employees signed a petition earlier this year asking Amazon to stop selling books, to stop selling the books Irreversible Damage and Johnny the Walrus. These are supposedly books that criticize transgenderism. The petition, I won't read it, but I think it's a bunch of hullo blue, just a bunch of wow wow, people can say things that we don't like, wow wow. And to give workers more say over which books the company decides to stop selling. And that's just stupid. You want more say over what Amazon gets to sell, it's like Amazon don't work for you, you work for Amazon. Like I don't know how to get more obvious than this, you do not own Amazon. You don't get to choose what gets sold and what don't. And honestly, I'm glad. I'm glad that you don't get to point and say, I don't like that book. Take it off the shelves. 
Honestly, this whole deal with employees should have more say over what gets to be sold. It seems like a recipe for disaster. I mean, I'm already skeptical with them saying, oh, those books shouldn't be sold because they're transphobic, but it's only a matter of time before it spreads to other issues as well. I don't like that book on Christianity. Take it down. I don't like that book on religion either. Take that down too. I don't like that book on economics. Take it down. I don't like this. Take it down. I don't like that. Take it all down. Imagine if all companies worked like this. Like, imagine if you couldn't get a game at GameStop because a bunch of employees got together and decided they don't like it. Like, imagine if a bunch of, like, Steam employees decided, yeah, we don't like that game. Take it off the store. It's like, come on. Employees say both books fall under Amazon's 2021 ban on selling books framing transgender and other sexual identities as mental illnesses. But yeah, back in 2021, Amazon began banning books that, in their words, portrayed transgenderism as a mental illness. And I suppose, based on historic precedent, these protesters are right, but it's like, it was a questionable policy to begin with. People were getting their books taken off with little to no explanation on Amazon's part. The only justification was that it was offensive. If they're reversing that policy, I say good on Amazon. About damn time. Amazon's decision to continue selling these books and others in the face of employee dissent has led some employees to resign. Well, there you have it. If you don't like a company, you don't have to work for them. It's almost too easy, isn't it, folks? One longtime Amazon employee who participated in Wednesday's protest said they weren't in a financial position to resign. The employee asked not to be named, noting that Amazon has previously fired employees who protested the company's policy. Protesting is a risk that a lot of us are willing to take because we can't continue to work for this company and turn a moral blind eye to its policies, the employee said. The form of protest, a die-in, was intended to highlight that transgender youth who face discrimination and are denied gender-affirming health care attempt suicide at rates many times higher than the general population. Republicans at the state level have, in the past year, advanced a slate of legislation to restrict transgender youth's access to medical treatment, sports, and public facilities. Alright, so there you have it. That's the article. I've got something to say to these protesters. A message, if you will. I know about a group of people who have pretty similar beliefs on banning books. I'd introduce you to them, but we kicked their asses in the Second World War. Pity. I think you guys would have gotten along just fine. But yeah, this whole deal with people protesting to get books that don't allow with their viewpoint banned, it's a scary thought. Sure, you could say, well, Amazon ain't the only place to get your books, but then again, they're probably the biggest distributor of them. I don't really get how you can protest for the removal of literature and think that you're being the good guys. At the end of the day, if someone's saying something that you don't agree with or you don't like, you don't censor them. You don't try to get them knocked off of every platform that you can. Challenge them, you debate them, you hold their ideas up to scrutiny. That's how this country works, and if you don't like it, you can pack your bags and go to whatever dystopian hellhole fits you best. And here's the real kicker with what these people are trying to do. When they protest for the removal of these books, it don't accomplish what they want it to accomplish. When they protest for these books to be removed from every major platform, they are granting these books legitimacy. It tells onlookers, such as myself, that the ideas that these books have, have to have some degree of truth to them if people are scrambling to get it knocked off of the shelves. And if these books are properly knocked off of store shelves, the books become that much more powerful. And I'm not saying this to beat on the transgender community. In fact, I think my words of advice would help them, if anything. If you want to beat these people who rag on your movement, you gotta get to their level. You gotta debate them using the facts available to you. Sure, you won't convince everybody, but when you call for books to be removed, you no longer become the victim, but rather the oppressor. Anywho, I gotta get this video up and out, cause the Ackman situation's causing a stir, and I gotta jump on that before it dies down. And lord, there is a lot of research that I gotta do, so I'm gonna get this video open edited, and uh, hopefully get on that. That's all I've got for this shtick though, so you guys do old Jackie a favor and keep it groovy. Thank you, thank you very much.